This is a small group discussion with J. Krishnamurti in Madras, 1984. So do you have anything in mind to discuss or Kabir and Amma have any, some things to ask you to discuss? Who would you like to begin? I wonder if you can't do that thing after. Yes. I really would like to discuss, have a dialogue about knowledge, time, thought and affection, love. Yes, I would like to discuss this. Not, I'd like to go very deeply into it and see whether it's, these are facts, not just imagination or some wishful thing. First of all, why has knowledge, in the ordinary sense of that word, become so important? Is it for secu- security that man has made knowledge is God? All the whole world, the universities, the religious organizations, place great emphasis on knowledge. And even in the past, knowledge was tremendously important. Eh? Why? Yeah. Apart from security and functional reasons, why has it become so important? Yes, discussion, please. Don't wait for me. I feel that man, to live is to know. Living means getting to know things, getting to know about the world, getting to know about facts of history, everything, getting to know about living. Living has become synonymous to knowing, sir. That is why knowledge has become very important. If you want, I can elaborate it. But I think every, every movement of ours in living, in understanding, is is a movement in knowing. Without knowing, what is it to experience? What is it to live, sir? What is the instrument of living without knowing, without experiencing? You are not answer my question. I am a point out. I am ask, we are asking why knowledge, which is based on experience and so on, why has that become so extraordinarily important? Yes, isn't it because that is the only way human beings have been acting? I know that. I know that. So here can we investigate, I mean, can we look at the life of a human being right from his very young days, as he grows up, how exactly the so brain I develops? Take a young boy or a young girl, goes to school, right? There he has learned, acquired knowledge, mathematics and all the rest, academically, and through college, university and so on. It's the same principle, right through life, acquiring knowledge and depending on it, right? In various departments, various disciplines, various religious organizations, knowledge has become not only important, but a means of security physical security, a professor, if he knows philosophy, 
studied all the civil philosophers of Western East. He's got a good job in the university. And there he settles down and he's for the next 50 years or so, or less, he's sick. He repeats, see, I well, and he adds and keeps on in the same direction all the time. Well, yes, it's something more than security, but it's the same thing, it's conquest, you know. <clears throat> the idea of going to Mars, I you know, or conquest in so many forms, it's an extension of the security idea. It is, the, it yeah. is safe. So, instead of giving up, you give up um, Shankara and take to Marx. Sir, may I say it is probably at a different level. What? At I a different level. Marx, but going to the moon or going to Mars or something like is that. Is it the same? Yes, it's the same. Wanting to go ahead. He does he mean, does he mean the very movement of acquiring knowledge or knowing is the movement of seeking security? No. Well, what I have to say is, sir, that man, Love is, you, man is aware of his isolation. As he is born, he is born in a very limited environment and he sees a vast world. Now when we talk of a global perspective of man, it becomes conceptual, it becomes only an idea I'm unless I'm he has talking. knowledge, unless he has the knowledge of the vastness of Africa, the vastness of South America, the vastness of Canada, the vastness of the Far East, of China. The, for instance, this knowledge is absolutely necessary for man to understand his place in the world, in existence. The infinite cosmos, Is everything. that why you give importance? The knowledge you, as a human being, identified with a particular group of people and, and so on and so on, a particular country. Know all about your country and from there start knowing other countries and so on, expand. I think what it is, is something quite different. It is the necessity to sustain self. When all around there was less knowledge before science made progress, then it was possible to have less knowledge and still feel that one is in a fairly good position. But when one is surrounded by a tremendous amount of knowledge, one has to acquire more knowledge, otherwise one becomes nobody. So it's part of the process of sustaining the self. It's not merely security. Security in knowledge security through knowledge is status, yes. a position. A position for the self. It's the same thing. So are you saying knowledge is used by human beings to sustain their own egotism? Identity, yes. Their own identity, their own... Uh, where they have their roots and so on, right. so on, so on. Would you? If I am with an intellectual group and if I, if I have very little knowledge, I will be out. I'll, out. No, I'll be out. out. So I have to eff make that more you, effort. So what does that mean? Would you, would you also say that the brain doesn't seem to know any other way of functioning excepting through knowledge and memory? I don't know about that. I think it's a question of giving importance to knowledge, as Krishnanji says. So, um, we, if you ask why, why, why is importance given? Yes. It's probably because no other way is known. No. Nope. It? It, that's what I started with. Seeing is known. Hearing is known. There is no other instrument by which we seem to be. You can't say no other way is known. Everybody knows affection to some extent, but this becomes very important and that loses importance. You can't say you don't know affection at all. The other day, yesterday or the day before, 
there was a professor here who had written a book. Huh? Mm. Primaji brought with him and his wife. He has written a book which has appeared in the review and in time, and now he's got a position. Yes. He's safe. Because knowledge is a status position. It gives you status. She is very right. He's full of himself, full of status. That is so knowledge brings status. Gives you status. Yes. Well, in, That's in, quite right. in the present world, it's only really knowledge that gives Not you. It, it, that has been so throughout history. Galileo followed, and mm. the Buddha, all of them, not perhaps all this. Having knowledge gives you a status. The priests in the ancient days, they were the only people who were learned. Right. The rest were all ignorant. Mm. They couldn't even read. That gave them tremendous authority. The very idea of elite from time immemorial has been connected with knowledge. The Brahmin. Yes. Right throughout the world. And I've asked myself why this has become such a strong important. Because it gives you a status, because you can be secure physically, secure intellectually and so on. Great knowledge gives so great <coughs> security. Right? Yes, yes. Huh? yes. So. Or if there is not knowledge, then it has to be a boxer or somebody. I, I, even the boxer, <laughs> he has to know how to box. Yes. If he's a good boxer, like some, some of them, they have got status immediately, million dollars for each fight. But or very more. little knowledge is involved. No, no. Oh, yes. Knowledge oh, is your book. Of course, skill. knowledge is your If you are playing good cricket, you must have knowledge. So, is this what knowledge gives? And in the giving, in having a position, security, what, what happens to the brain when it is? Full of this. You answer this, please. Before that, I would like to ask a question. Does knowledge per se, what? does knowledge per se, knowledge in itself, the factor or the self using knowledge? No. The self is knowledge. No, Radhaji, we have to teach, we have to play, we have to do things. Their knowledge is necessary. In itself, there is no harm, it is not detrimental. But the person who uses that knowledge for self, then it becomes destructive. Otherwise, how can you live in this world? How can you do anything without knowledge? I am so, not saying we should do without knowledge. So, therefore, you have always said there is a right place of knowledge. First yes. of all, to understand what it means the right place of knowledge no, we'll and keep it aside. We'll come to that in a minute. As we said to earlier, knowledge is the self. Right? That's true. So the self is acquiring knowledge to give to itself a status, a position, a security. A standard way, a way of living. Also, sir, self is also experiencing greed, ambition, all these things. The self is also learning through experience, which is knowledge. Is knowledge itself the self, or? Is consciousness of knowledge the self? What's the difference? What is it? Is the yes. self knowledge <coughs> uh, or uh, conscious of knowledge? Uh, consciousness of possessing knowledge the self. Uh, let us take a carpenter. He learns the skill which is knowledge, but if he is simple and innocent and using his skill which involves knowledge, uh, is it a building of the self 
Or is it only when he becomes conscious of his knowledge, in the consciousness of that knowledge, the Self no, is No, the Self is so. <coughs> <coughs> Not when he's conscious of acquiring knowledge, and that gives him importance. Are you saying, sir, if all knowledge is self, what is the meaning of saying that there is a right place for knowledge? Yes, yes think, that is. We are inquiring, slowly going. Mm. Go. Yes, I would. Uh, 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 I, uh, I asked the same question as Sunanda, if all knowledge is Self. No, I said, Self is knowledge. I said, all knowledge is Self. You can't make the statement the other way. Yes. All knowledge is Self, problem is not right. Self is knowledge is That's all I have said. No, it makes no difference. If knowledge is in its right place. I am saying, it comes little later. Yes, yes. You are bringing something me. in which we should come to it slowly. You don't give any reality to what I am suggested, which is living itself, my learning about life, about jealousy, greed, ambition, etc. is also a learning in knowledge. That's all knowledge. That's what I mean. It's also learning in knowledge, isn't it? No. So come on. If I'm <coughs> The, the scientist who was talking yesterday, Dr. Mahabala, he was talking to me just before and he said, according to computer scientists, there is no perception possible without labeling. Without labeling, naming. Yes, yes, I know, I know. And I wouldn't use the word perception. Did you use the word? He used the word perception. He said there is no perception without Name without yes knowledge. There is no perception without naming. The naming is knowledge. That's right. Yes. Yes. That's right. Yes. So there is no perception without knowledge. Right? That's, right. That's what he says. He says. What are we discussing? started by asking the question, why has knowledge become so important in life? From there. It is a way of survival. Yes. If I was living in a jungle from the ancient, you know, I have to have knowledge how to kill, how to eat, skin the animal or whatever it is. I have to. I have, if I was a herbalist, I would have knowledge and so on, so on, and so on, right through life. Is that all? Is knowledge, is that all knowledge? No, it is much more. It has become something very much more. What is that? It is, we are not getting only the knowledge which we have to have, like the man in the jungle. The present day man is getting knowledge for the sake of knowledge. Also behind it, there is curiosity, inquiry, to discover, to come upon. All behind the movement of knowledge that is also there. Mm-hmm. If we take up uh, scientific knowledge, for example, they examine any particular thing, the atom or a leaf or whatever it is. They go so far, and then. Every little advance calls for a further uh, research, further inquiry. So in the situation itself is continually asking for uh, more acquisition of knowledge. For instance, four stories yesterday, after Prabhuji's talk at the Hmm. IIT, he said, we are puzzled by his statement that where there is knowledge, there cannot be love. What does he mean by that? dealt with knowledge yesterday. Up to a point they understood. We are in the same position. You were asking what happens to the brain 
which has all this knowledge, what happens? It becomes insensitive. It becomes knowledge is the past, there is no future knowledge. Knowledge is always the past, therefore we live in the past. And knowledge is the past, so our life is always behind. Something that's gone, something that I remember. Is remembrance knowledge? Yes, of course. Either uh, it look at it, Captain. Captain. Remembrance is knowledge, right? Yes. Would you yes. agree that there is re- remembrance? Of course, I think it's obvious. Remembrance of two kinds. Remembrance which is actually recollected and remembrance which is in the brain, which we don't ne- necessarily... It's stored there. It's yes, stored it's stored there. there. But not active. Not active. Yes. So When I, re- I remember yesterday going to that talk, hmm. is that going there, see all those people, see, which is recorded, hmm. That becomes known. Yes. So, do you see the significance of all this? A brain caught everlastingly in knowledge. Hmm? Everlastingly living in things that are dead. Memory. Had a sexual experience, stored repetition of it, and so on and on and on. I write a book, and that's it, all the rest of it. So the brain is living in memory, in knowledge, in repetition, and adding, taking away, but it's still movement of memory, of knowledge. Not being the past. Yes. So what happens to such a brain? It has very little energy. Huh? It has very little energy. Not only really that, sir. Look at it, it more. It is set in a pattern. It's always translating the present in terms of the past. Right? Yes, it is. Are the conclusions, ideological conclusions, political conclusions, and so on? And I meet the present, present challenge of my. If I'm a politician, I meet the present challenge of Das Kapital or Marx, and I adjust myself. So on. So what happens to such a grid? It can never receive anything new. Because as I see no, it, I as don't bring in the new. What what actually happens to the grid? I see this that when I try to comprehend anything, what I say comprehension, what I say understanding is all in terms of through what I have moved. Yes. Hmm? Occupy. No, I think the it is. Uh, it can't listen. It's uh, wearing away because it's all the time carrying a burden. Burden. Oh. And also, it's a totally mechanical system. And if you look at a computer, it is just like a computer. That's just my point. So it's like a mechanical process. Go on, please go ahead and see. Look at it carefully. I've I put a question to you. Answer it, the question, not you say I will say we are living in the past. Past experience recorded, 
and that becomes knowledge, and that knowledge helps me to drive the car better, avoid accidents. Mm-hmm. And also, um, um, married or not married and so on, there too knowledge interferes or blocks relationship. So go on, <coughs> investigate it. You will not investigate it. So what happens to the brain? It not only becomes mechanical, Knowledge is a degenerating factor. I have been studying sociology and I have been, my brain has been disciplined in that study. And it is a quite tremendous knowledge from books and talks and all the rest of it. And the brain is now full of that particular subject, hmm, that particular discipline, and all the other parts are rather nebulous, vague. Hmm. Huh? Somehow there is. <coughs> not quite all right. well, what's because the knowledge a person acquires is not only about sociology, but I mean, to, I about so. several other disciplines, several other things, and also about, I don't know why you are putting aside this whole question of living itself is living in knowledge, about living, how to live every day. I'm coming to that. We first, see, first right. let's find out what what. Knowledge is doing actual. To obey. Then mm-hmm. we can move away from it. But if you start theoretically moving away from it, this is no meaning. I think this is quite correct. The area of knowledge <coughs> it takes the central position and the rest becomes vague. And also, don't you see? It is a degenerating fact. Yes, that no, is very no, 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 I think I have not understood. <coughs> Understand that point? very clearly. How exactly it is written. It's like a gramophone record, repeating, repeating, adding, adding, taking away, but it's the same movement, right? Right. Round and round. And the brain says, What takes me if you keep on doing that for the rest of your life, as most people do? The cells themselves become dull, insensitive, not quick in response, not seeing something somebody says instantly, the false is the truth of it. So it begins to get lazy, slack, and degenerate. Grab, it's gone. Is that what has happened in the world? Wars have been going on. You follow? Take all these things. Patterns have been set. She knowledge. I'm an American, an anti communist. Hmm? And the communists say, I'm a Russian, I'm against all other, etc. etc. It's the same pattern. So, I say, I say, knowledge is a deteriorating factor. I do have, I must have knowledge how to write a letter and so on. So, where is knowledge essential and not, not essential? For my clarification. Would you make a distinction between knowledge for writing a letter and knowledge to, as a computer scientist or as any other? Knowledge, form of knowledge, knowledge. Whether it's computer, whether it's writing a letter, or the knowledge of a scientist. They are all 
not harmful in themselves. Then. What? They are not detrimental in themselves. What do you mean? Sir, you say knowledge is necessary to write no, a letter. No, I, I, I withdraw that for the moment. Knowledge is a deteriorating factor. Meet that challenge. Uh, uh, sir, I think this is cl uh, clear uh, in oneself that knowledge is a deteriorating factor. You know that. But you know what you are what you are admitting? The moment you say that, see the implications of You agree, sir? Yes. See, tell me what the impli see the what actually goes on. All knowledge is a deteriorating factor. How do I learn anything? No, I don't think that is the question to ask. <coughs> is that so first? That's what you are asking. No, you ask. I've asked you. I don't think all knowledge is detrimental. I said no, I did not say all knowledge. You see, I said knowledge is a deteriorating factor. We see is that knowledge. Sir, he doesn't agree. I don't agree for this reason. Sir, sir. I don't care. No, sir, it is for this reason that I found that physical exercise is absolutely essential to keep alert. Similarly, I found that knowledge was absolutely essential as a discipline to keep alert, to oh, keep no. the mind alert. Oh no, 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 no. I put the two on the same level. No, no. I wouldn't agree, sir. If I you can I'll keep meet your physically child. alert Wait, without sir. knowledge? To, to, to do exercise, do you need Do you need can you say you can keep alert in mind without knowledge? Children are. Oh yes. We ask ourselves no, uh, this no, question. No, Achiji's point is if Krishnaji were talking about this very same thing to the gardener or uh, you know someone um, <clears throat> like that. He just wouldn't understand what he is talking about, that a development of the mind, the cultivation of the mind, the exercise of the mind is necessary no, in no. order to come to the point where you can understand but this question. Is that coincident with knowledge? No, that is, I am just putting the Radhaji, question. Radhaji, just mm. listen. Kay says knowledge is a deteriorating fact. Yeah. Ajuji says no. I say I'll show you how it is a deteriorating fact. Knowledge is always in the past. Yes. Knowledge is always limited. Always. There is no right? Mm -hmm. Eternally it's limited. Yes. And you see the implications. You are saying anything which is a limitation I, I is deteriorating. Huh? Anything which is a limitation. No, I would say first, of course, if I live in my backyard thinking about myself, it's a very limited affair. And if I do exercise to keep my brain away, it's a limited affair. Hmm. Of course. Yes. I don't take it. No. I don't think like that. Let me finish. I yes. am trying to understand, sir. But no, you have made I a very good point, sir, which has shaken me that you say that knowledge is always in the past. And this is a statement which really has shaken me from what I was saying. I am working out the implications in my mind as you are speaking. So I am quite, I am listening quite alertly to what you are saying. So, knowledge is always limited and so for thought is limited. And that very limitation is divisive. Yes, every limitation. Don't add more, just say go along. 
and then I'm going to cha- at the end of the challenge and answer divisive, and therefore conflict, effort becomes necessary. Effort to do exercise, effort to get up in the morning, effort to learn, accumulate, everything becomes effort. Essentially because it's based on knowledge which is limited, thought and therefore thought is limited. Wherever there is limit limitation, there is divisiveness and therefore conflict. Effort. I've stated that. Its ball is in your court. Answer the question, not add to it or expand it. Are you equating? I'm, I'm asking only for elucidation. Acquiring of knowledge for teaching, acquiring of knowledge to do anything. Any acquiring is a divisive process. I said knowledge. Acqui- Knowledge means what? Acquiring yeah, knowledge. Acquiring the knowledge. process of acquiring. Of course, of course. Itself is divisible. Of course. All the implications of Possessing knowledge, like these professors and scientists, huh? it is a divisive process. Then we said, wait, you haven't understood that. Knowledge, which is gathered through experience, and knowledge, and therefore thought, is a limited process. Is limited, and that limitation is the very essence of div- divisiveness. I am an Arab; he is a Jew. Finished. Therefore, perpetual conflict between us. War. Right. I see wait, that. Wait, 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 wait. Just go slow. Mm. And the same in human relationship. If I have knowledge of you as a, a scholar, as my wife who is a boy, and so on, I, this knowledge which I have accumulated about you prevent and therefore limited and therefore conflict with you. And therefore, it's not love. That is clear. But we, we don't agree. So I am I'm saying essentially, knowledge is a deteriorating factor because it is a strain, it is a con, and so on. So on. Where I don't see is that up to the point where you say knowledge is limited and therefore it is divisive, yes, but I don't see that because it is limited and divisive there is the need for effort. Of course. To say that thinking itself is effort. I am making an effort to have more knowledge, to be more secure. Because you you have achieved a certain state of security, I compare myself with you and I want that position. Therefore I make an effort. It's constant acquiring effort. Consequent upon division and conflict. Of course. So, do you have absolutely no place for a paradox in your? What do you mean paradox? Paradox means two opposites coexisting. Oh no, of course not. I don't know what you mean. Why do you bring that in? Because I think we are faced with a paradox. In what you say, that is truth. In what you say, at the same time, it runs counter to the facts of our life. No. So the two, the fact no. of our life is a fact, and what you are saying is also a fact. So you are not answering my question, sir. Are you? What's your question now, sir? Do I have stated this? Knowledge and all the rest of it. That is essentially 
basically a deteriorating factor. We all, in human relationship, in in the in depth. Knowledge must always be superficial. Still there is some blockage because when you say that knowledge is a deteriorating factor in relationship, one understands it. But in the whole education uh-huh. process... Not understand. Is it a fact? It's, sir, let me, uh-huh. let me state the paradox which is... A no, I am not talking of paradox. You but you have not understood. I have not understood something. When you, then why do we have schools? Why do we say excellence in a particular thing? In that process, there is involved the acquisition of knowledge. So no, lady, lady, just listen to my question. I'm, I'm still in your relationship, knowledge is a detrimental, divisive factor. The human relationship. That I see. It. Wait, wait. What do you mean you see? I have seen it unfolding in my life as I, as it operates every day. Right. And uh, and knowledge. Not learning. Learning is totally different from knowledge, acquiring knowledge. Even knowledge. Hmm. Huh? No, no, like it's a very interesting thing. What? Huh? No, no, And I say a professor, a scientist, a carpenter, a horticulturist. Moment he has acquired knowledge that gives him a sense of safety, protection, uh, earning more money, a status. Moment you have a status, you are deteriorating. That's all I'm saying. Yes. Yes, sir. Right? See what happens. Move from that. He said, by using one new word into this discussion, much has been clarified. What is that? That is the distinction between learning and knowledge. Ah, that will come to that. No, word. you have just now, by merely mentioning that word, immediately the whole field has, you yes, know, sir, like a catalytic. I, I won't come to that a little later. Wait. No, therefore we come to what you are saying afresh. What? If I learn mathematics and not... No, you don't learn mathematics. If I... knowledge... mathematics as you, knowledge. He teaches me science. He knows all about it. He's transferring his knowledge about science to me, okay. pouring it into me. Yes. Yes. He's not teaching me to learn. I get it. I get it. I get it, sir. Oh, may I translate it, Amar? You know, as I understand it. Knowledge, you don't see, like see, see, you are missing something. Yes, yes. Tremendous, you are missing something. Everything is being poured into mathematics, geography, history, my wife's sex, everything is. Right? That becomes my knowledge. And what takes place when you I'm never empty. I'm all, the cup is always full. And therefore utterly useless. Krishna Ji. Do you see this? A cup is useful only when it is empty. <coughs> See the implication. A cup is useful only when it's empty. But if it is full all the time. Right, sir? Then what is the movement of such a I don't know, no solution. See what is going on, then out of that comes solution. You better have another. It's very interesting. Very Very interesting. Are you saying 
Hmm? That professor the other day, a woman she names, he is completely full of other people's Shankara, Buddha, and local mm, <coughs> saint, local professor, and so on. He is full of it. Right? Quoting, mm-hmm. explaining. And never a moment when the vessel is empty. But it's it only when it's empty of learning. But uh, 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 yes. Sir, why the professor, sir? It is the position of every yeah, one of yeah. us because we may not know what Shankara or Buddha said, but the mind is still full as but you that's said. Why I'm that. of so it's full of knowledge. Yes, full of knowledge. Some of it unconscious knowledge. Unconscious, racial, family, yes. uh, community, and so on. So yes, and it's, I think that unconscious thing is more difficult than this. Uh, what you get out of Shankara or whatever it is. So, the vessel is never empty. It's not empty, yes. Never. never. And you can carry that simile, don't carry that simile too far. So, Is it when a cup is empty, something new can be poured into it. But if it is always full, you can ne- it can never be empty to be added. Everything gets contaminated by the world. Sir, I am just asking. Don't ask me, you are telling me. Do you want to say something? Yes, I would like to understand this movement of learning. We'll come to that we'll come to yes. that Do I see this? Do I really see the deep in implications of what knowledge has done? I The difficulty, sir, is I see, and I probably everybody sees this. It is not just words, I do see it, but somehow I don't see it in all its depth. So perhaps I don't know why, why, why one is unable to see such a thing. I see enough to say this is absolutely true, but not enough. Still, because it's, I'm not able to see it in, in its full totality. I was saying perhaps this point could become a little clearer if you could throw some light on the relationship between this acquisitive process of knowledge which you have pointed out and our consciousness, now before our normal consciousness. Before you go to that, Achyuti, I would like to ask in continuation, is it because even at this moment, there, when I am listening to this, when I am looking at it, there is still like the back of my brain too much? Is it because of that that I am not able to see it in its thought and in its depth? I don't know if case is in totality either. So let us inquire. Do we, without running the simile to death, do we see when the cup is full, it makes its own ripples? Yes. And those ripples we call them to accumulate. To okay. Yes, it's full of turmoil that contends. Yeah. yeah. I'm saying.
human beings have always received Receive. He tells me about science. Oh, that way, knowledge. She mm-hmm. tells me about biology, and she tells me sociology, and you tell me ancient wisdom, and he tells me sociology, and so on. I'm always the vessel that is received. Mm-hmm. If I don't receive what happens, I might become a fanatic. Ah, ah, ah. No, no, no. Don't use that word. If I don't receive. I just look. No, don't receive. Say, for instance, K talks yesterday. Or he is talking. I don't know if you are not observing. He doesn't pour something into you. Right? Do you agree with that? Yes. I agree that he is. Wait, 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 wait. He says right at the beginning, lecture is not a lecture. Instruct to inform. No. Which is to cover you. Yes, sir. I agree. Wait a minute. Is it possible? I mean, that's a question which you must be investigated. To be in a position or have a my brain that is not receiving, receiving, receiving. We won't go into that. So, so far we have said knowledge in relationship with human beings is a detrimental factor, leading to conflict, leading to effort, leading to all kinds of mischievous activity in human relationship, right? We are great. Krishnaji, there is one, one point that we should clear up here. You are talking of the movement of receiving all the time. What? We, we said that all the time the brain is receiving. Yes. And yet, at a certain level, a person would say, I am not only receiving, but I am actively searching and acquiring. Which is the acquiring means? Yes, receiving. of course. But he, he gives a different quality to it and says it is different. Knowledge is a destructive factor in life. I stick to that. I also see that if the mind can never be empty, any knowledge it receives will be destructive. What? Any knowledge it receives will be destructive. I, Do you agree I, to that? I first thought that some knowledge is not destructive and some which is with to, to do with psyche is destructive. But now I see, so long as the mind is not empty, any knowledge is destructive. This I see. But yet there must be freedom from knowledge and to act with knowledge. Huh? I don't understand, sir, what you mean. Freedom from <coughs> knowledge. No. Huh? I am going back. What do you mean by not receive? Because one has to listen. Uh-huh. One has to respond. Uh-huh. Yes, yes, yes. But you see, I'm going to go a little further. Mm-hmm. Rather, uh, rather you just mm-hmm. What is receive? What is acquire? Are you using the word receiving in the sense of acquiring? Acquire, pouring in. No, sir. I thought that when you said receiving, it is like the earth receiving rain. Yes, that's it. Ah, yeah. ah, don't, 
Don't bring any simile, the earth. No, 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 sir. No. I just wanted to say. No, sir. Well, well, it means acquire. We'll keep acquire. it aside. We'll keep it aside. In that case, we'll yes, sir. It's, it's not so like listening. It's quite different. It, it, it has to come. No, don't, <laughs> don't reduce to listening. It's no. acquire. Because I've gained through knowledge. I'll have, I'll have a position and safety, security, now all the rest of it. Yes. This. Yes. So I listen to him very carefully, uh, but without science. acquiring. No. Ah, in no, order to I'm, acquire, I'm. Uh, <coughs> he's a doctor in physics. He's telling me I'm acquiring because I want a position of security in knowledge. If I pass my exams, I will get a good job, right? I acquire. Which is not. Yes, of course. So, let's go back. Would you then see the basic reality, not basic, rea- the truth, that knowledge is a deteriorating fact? No. If we say that, we are going totally against the world. Knowledge is power? Yes, it goes against the entire system. Yeah. And is this right? You are all agree so quickly that you, is this right? Is this true? You follow me? If humanity, with all the saints and all the uh, avatars and all the Shankaras and all and so on, all, they have, right? And we are saying something totally opposed to all human endeavour, either they are totally mis- they are taking the wrong turn, or we are the uh, case we brought all together. Like, like, like the mother says, like the mother says, Tommy is in the right step, the army is all wrong step. <laughs> you know what story is? <laughs> mother is looking at the army marching and sees that her son Tom is not in step, so she says, the army is out of step. Is out of step. <laughs> so am I out of step? If I'm not out of step, when you say, knowledge is the enemy of love. Use the word enemy in its kindliest sense, not enemy to kill or Knowledge is the enemy of love. You accept it. Say yes. If you accept that, knowledge then is, you follow? All the implications are involved in it. So, do you know the snag of that? Huh? Do you know the snag of your statement? There is a snag in what you say. Yes. That love is totally non volitional. Of course. Therefore, we can do nothing about it. I, I don't say no. you know nothing about no, it. No, sir. We can do nothing about it. Oh, no. That's another. No. Going back to your question whether <coughs> this is out of step, I think we can say that the proof of the pudding is in the eating and the fact that everything goes by knowledge and it has led to this kind of a world is proof enough if one wants proof. Yes, yes. yes. No, but see, if proof is enough, huh? you have the proof, but look. All the colleges are doing this, all the universities are doing this. 
Yeah. Man knows nothing else. But I did. You see what you're doing? No, You've sir. already fallen into the trap. It is not that. Just listen to what she said. Mm. Repeat it. But why, she said, why are all university schools continuing with knowledge? If man had known that there is another way. No, you don't know the way. That's what I said. I didn't say anything else. Ah. So, Point out to me what I said wrong. I have forgotten what you said. I only said because man has not known the other way. The, that's it. The moment you say known the other way, it's already brought into the field of no, knowledge. But he doesn't know anything. The statement has no meaning. He only knows this. He does not know any other. No. Uh, 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 he uh, uh, says uh, you are juxtaposing the other as you against cannot, this. You cannot know the uh, whatever it is without understanding this completely. And, and has, no, it is not that, uh, Sunanda. I think it is also the system is so powerful. If you can't say the universities do this. Let us take the KFI schools. Yes. Their also knowledge is of being course, inculcated because the yeah. children have to go into the system. So that's what I'm saying. That's what I also said, but you. But you see, Sunanda, what it Doesn't means. Matter. What it means? Work it out. It means we cannot function within this system. We have to stop functioning in this system and see what happens. And as no, Radhaji rightly pointed no, out, no, not see what happens. Either it is so or it is not so. If you say see what happens, then he is there. In terms of the school, we have to see what happens in itself. No. Is it possible to? Break entirely out of the system, that is the question. Of course. Of course, individually. Ah, 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 ah. Now we are all forgiven. What do you mean by that, sir? Either it is true and therefore uh, applicable. Or it's not true, therefore you, all the problems are. Right? If the being is the right being to support all this, then it'll support, it'll last ever lost you. Of course, I'm just you know, all the rest of it. So, in the same way, if this is true, no half true, so if this is true, then that will act. What Radhaji is trying to say was individually this. There is no individual to me. You see, you are back again. Now, I am not saying you are right, you are wrong. When you use the individual, are you an individual? You have to investigate all that. No, as long as I am filled with this knowledge, so there, there is no individual. I am not an individual. That knowledge itself is the absence exactly. of individual. Exactly. Follow the sequence of all this. He is a scientist, I am a butcher. The butcher is law of position. But butch butchering is a knowledge too. Yes. The, the admiral of navy he's got very good knowledge position and going back but every don't, don't. brain is the human brain so it is this. any skill is knowledge sir huh? skill is knowledge yes. i have to have skill to build this house yes it's also knowledge cool so skill is also detrimental skill based on knowledge is is there skill without knowledge there may be. The point is, can what is that? Ex I mean, capacity, as we know, is based on experience. Yes. Right. I have built several houses, and I have the capacity to put the things together. That gives me status. Capacity is accumulation of great minute of experience, which has given me knowledge. And so, 
is their capacity, which is not based on experience. And you don't. That's I'm asking all this. That's why I asked, sir. Just know, is there a skill? There is no relationship to knowledge. I can only answer that question when I am not. I am. The brain is free from knowledge. Then there's capacity, probably untold capacity. Go on, tell me. You're all accepting what I'm objecting to. You don't question. You say, what makes you say that? If that professor was willing to talk to you, that professor had been there from America, he would question, he said, what are you talking about? The whole world is based on Either you are so absurd, cuckoo, you are, you don't know what you are talking about. And I say, sir, please listen. And I will go in, if he is willing to listen, or just brush me off. Say, that's all right. But he is willing to listen. I will point out, step by step, as we have done just now. Right? And either he says, oh, he will say, Intellectually, reasonably, you are right. But in actual daily life, it's not like that. So back again. Right? So let's leave that question. So where am I? Where are we? Do I realize, not the fact? Not the idea of the fact. Do I realize the fact that I live in the past? The I is the past, and the past is divisive. Right? It's not the whole. Therefore, there is conflict. Therefore, this everlasting effort to I actually realize in my blood. That is the whole point. And that's for you to answer. Because uh, we can't ask the same questions as the professor, obviously, because they have been uh, going into this way. This is not the first time we have heard it. We have gone into it, we see it, but we can't say that we don't see it, it's just a, a logical argument. It's something more than a logical argument. And yet I ask myself, why do I go on in the same way? <laughs> I wouldn't put that question. I am asking if biologically the brain is functioning for survival in a way in which it can only function this way. That's, a, that's what she is asking, the same thing. No, no. Uh, that's what Krishnaji was saying. In practical uh, life, it's not uh, possible. Leave, I don't say it's not possible. Leave the professor. Take the farmer or take anybody. Yes, sir, sir, what are you trying to say? I am saying that any human being, the way the brain has been constituted and trained after centuries, it is for survival. And its way of survival is to meet the challenges by storing the knowledge. And we've said all from that, sir. We've said all that. That seems to be the natural thing. We, we, the, that may be unnatural. How do you seems, say it's natural? How do we, he doesn't seem to know any other way. No. That, that's not the point, sir. That's the only way we know. He says that way only the cup will remain full. I see, never be I see the other. I see what he says also very clearly. So a very interesting thing happened at that discussion with the professor. I was listening to that discussion and all the time while listening I was on the side of the professor. I said, poor chap, he is being cornered. He is doing? Being cornered. Yes. Poor then chap. as soon as I came out and I met the professor, 
and I said the professor I said to the professor sir we all agree that our main object of living is to negate the self everything that makes for the self we negate it and how no, beautifully no, no, no. It, no. that's not the object of life sir no sir that is understood as the main function of comprehension of knowledge what is the purpose of comprehension to see the ways of the self no sir no i don't know what you, uh, would you explain i and sir well, i'm sorry I'm, yes and so on and yeah. when i said that everything that krishna ji was saying was that anything that we said he showed that it is the it is feeding the self therefore it has to be negated knowledge is to be negated because knowledge is what sustains the self and he said that i was able to see this intellectually but i couldn't go with it cool so in fact we came to the point where you said uh, and yet i go on yes i think this is the problem it is not no, should should i should i put myself in the position where i say and yet i go on but it's a fact is it a fact <coughs> four days ago krishna ji or in his talk two weeks ago krishna ji said this and he has been repeating it almost every day knowledge is the enemy of love he started by saying knowledge is the enemy of innocence uh, and so on that was when jagannath yeah. radhaya came and this days have passed it has i grasp it to some extent but i am going on it's a fact it hasn't uh, I, i haven't stopped going on that way i don't believe that i wouldn't say that that probably what you mean. you want to stop that going no, on he can't say i don't want to stop that no i no just wait, just wait, just wait. you made a statement just now mm. i've listened to k for us to day he's been repeating this thing in different ways mm. love knowledge is the enemy of love mm. so he is put this in ten different ways mm-hmm. and i have understood it more intellectually more than that more than that. That. i guess mm. much more than that. Mm. but it isn't it hasn't you follow all this yes, it hasn't yeah. some yeah. open yeah. dark oh. the flower is mm. always in state of bud yes that's <laughs> it <laughs> it's never blossom So what is there with is there something wrong what no, is no 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 just to look no, no. I wish you would listen yes the bud which is what we come to that single thing no that the bud has never blossomed mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you say why should not I wouldn't ask why. Yes. The bud has not blossomed. That's a question. Yes. Leave the question in the air. I understand. Then so. Mm-hmm. Then it has its own vitality. Move it. Do something. The moment die. you ask why it has. Ah, uh, <laughs> it will die or it may live. Mm-hmm. But leave it open. That's a dialogue. I don't want to make it clear. Huh? Yes. He also said, try to see what it is to live without an effort for 24 mm. hours, 48 hours. I've just been observing this. No, keeping to the question of knowledge, yes. he said something very interesting the other day that to have knowledge is to be lazy huh you said to have knowledge to have knowledge is to be lazy yes yes slot 
a dull, a dull, dull mind. mind. But that was in connection. It's he what it implied that words, words, mm. which are not thoughts, yes. then those words control us. That means remembrance of am angry. I'm taking that a silly example. I've already, when I'm angry, I've used the word anger. Word and image. A remembrance of the word and naming the new reaction as anger. As anger. If I didn't use the word anger or I identify the present reaction with the past, then what takes place? You follow? See, leave it open. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's Did go back. Go back to the question of not acquiring anything. Yes, <laughs> it is, um, if one doesn't use the word, then the secret seems to be there. Radhaji, cognizing itself, cognizing itself then is the thing. No, how does one acquire? I, I don't because know whether I mean, feel it, I must feel it, otherwise I'm lonely, I'm miserable, right? etc. But you see, Radhaji, knowledge I, for my, for K says definitely, knowledge, not only the enemy of innocence, love, all that is explained, and he also adds further, learning is the only active thing that will prevent all deterioration. Right? Right? Mm-hmm. Learn. Go on. He has stated that. What? Go on with it. What is learning then? Go on. Ask. Ask. A learning which is not converted into knowledge. Not acquisitive. But there is the automatism at work. No, yes. no. When you understand deeply. Knowledge is a deteriorate on the rest of it, real in your blood. Then what is learning? It's like perception, continuous flow of the waters of the river. Right? Perception is that. Learning is that. Pure perception. No, no, don't you learn it. Oh, no, careful, careful. Mm. Perception is like running water, mm. like a stream. Mm-hmm. Learning is also the same. Is there a difference between perception and learning? To be darling, just wait, we don't begin to differentiate. He says perception is like a river. Mm-hmm. Continuous flow of work. There is never a blockage. Blocking is knowledge. Hmm. Hmm. Right? Any dam is a lot. So it must be continuous flow of work. So learn, that says that. And forget that for me. Learning is constant movement, whereas knowledge is not, is, is static, yes. whereas learning is learning, never accumulated. I saw that bird, which is Dago, Dango, Dango. what is that bird? Dango, 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 
Dango? Drongo. 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 That's D R O N G O. Drongo. Drongo. Oh, the bird. Yes. I see. He comes and sits on his particular ground every morning for about ten minutes, literally. Now the word drongo prevents me from looking at it quietly. The word I have learned, which has become the knowledge, and I identify that bird with my knowledge. Yes. Right? So I never look at the bird. Knowledge is preventing me looking. While I, there is no knowledge, I am learning, watching how it moves. The whole, the whole thing is a constant movement. Right? Therefore, there is never a moment of accumulation. A lake invariably becomes dirty. Because the water is not flowing. static. Whereas a moving water is never dirty. It's cleaning itself, it's moving, moving, moving. But what cleans the water which is already dirty? No water I view as the capacity to clean itself. What happens no. is there is a specific gravity of stagnant water and the specific hmm. gravity of a moving water there is a change. <laughs> In the moving water it is lighter, therefore the heavier thing sits down, the lighter thing flows. Yes. <laughs> you have seen that. Adya Adama going down to the <laughs> sea. The water is dirty. Yes. But sea comes from the there is open the sea water comes from the May I put it in a different way? The drongo sits there. The word drongo, the image, everything is already in my mind. It's not as if I'm now going to accumulate it. It's already there. That's it. No, it's already there because you told me this morning the word drongo. Yes, he told you, but in our case we already know it for I didn't, last I didn't know years. the name of it. I saw it. A tail spread, mm. graceful, mm. and all the rest of it. Right, the lovely bird. Mm. He tells me, uh, uh, yesterday I pointed out to Remaji, and she said, It's a uh, drong. I didn't quite hear, he said, Dongo or something like that. So he corrected me. Before I didn't know it. Yes. That's different matter, don't no, but I'm What happens to you tomorrow, sir, when you huh? see the bird? What will happen tomorrow yeah, when so you see I'm the bird? I'm very aware that the world doesn't interfere. Yes. I kept looking at it. I've done it seven days yes. now. You mean that when the mind is very aware, very alert, then the yeah. word may be learnt, but it doesn't but interfere? It doesn't interfere. <laughs> you I tend to do that with, I think, what you consider unimportant things. You love them under your word. What is very important to you, say, people. You would never call them people or something. You would re react to them as a No, I don't think that but is But all dramas to you are the same, so you love them under the drama. A thing may be very unimportant. To me, the microphone may be unimportant, but the moment I look at it, it's the mind says that's microphone. It has yeah. identified. Yes, that's so what it is identified as a microphone because it's not that particular one. Well, but we do that. No, we do that to it. people as well. So would you? Would you not put it this way? The whole thing. A drum is always empty. You see, otherwise, huh? Mm -hmm. It's only when you strike on it, it makes a noise. Mm -hmm. If the drum is out of tune, the noise will be, the sound will be out. not harmonious. Mm -hmm. But if the drum is kept empty and noisy, then whatever you strike on will correct note. But we, the drum is never empty. 
Huh? Mm -hmm. He's always full, so and he's always responding to to the past knowledge. But if he was empty, he knew the right tone all the time. I don't know if you read this, but I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, I may be jumping, but what do we do in our schools? We are it's always... It's for you, sir, to work it out. That's your... Co that's co where you are learning. Good God, sir. First of all, I won't begin with school or school. I would begin, if I was here, there in Bangalore, I would begin by establishing what to teach for the right relationship. Okay. Do all the teachers understand, all the students understand, then work on that, and from there move. Otherwise, if you start, no knowledge, no this, and they say, what the hell are you talking about? I'm not advising, so I'm just pointing out to you. If the danger is that this will become a new kind of knowledge if it is yeah. taught in that way. Yeah. The other day when there was a seminar, you could see that there are people who had learned the answers. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Downstairs. Are you going up, sir? <laughs> you look like gossip, sir. What do you think fits in the whole world? Knowledge can never be intelligence. Would you say that intelligence is love? Yes, I'm saying that. You have also said that intelligence is outside the brain. Yes, that's right. Love is, a, is not sensation. If it love is sensation, it will be the brain. Sensory responses, touch, yeah, yes. you be the brain. Right? Yeah, I, this is logic, it works out. Right? So it is, if it logically works out, when you captured something original, and it works out itself, so, I stand by. Sir, I would like to ask something which is to me theoretical, but I would like to hear your answer. <clears throat> you have said that only by... there is no individual. No, no, no. It's not individual, it's not. But I don't think this requires a good, careful going. So in the field of intelligence there is no individuality. Absolutely. Because in intelligence is not divisible. Like space. Yeah, it's it's intelligence. You can't see my intelligence, your intelligence or the intelligence of scientists. Very interesting. What is the relationship between mind and intelligence? I would say, for me, mind is outside the brain. Yes. And therefore, mind is the essence of intelligence, which is loving so now, I would like to ask a question. Does, 
doing your reading of scriptures and all the rest of himself. Does any of the, all this occur? Yes, even the professor said that day <coughs> that there have been a number of people, including your enemy Shankara, who have enemy. said <laughs> <laughs> they have said that knowledge leads nowhere. But he was no these were not theoretical, I'm not sure. We don't know, sir. I that don't is know. Really right. jumping to conclusions. I wouldn't know. It, it is possible that in twenty years or even two years people may convert what you say into yeah. Yeah. So what are you trying to say? No, you asked whether there is anything oh, in, yes, the, yes. in the books. Um, it is fair, fairly widely uh, accepted that knowledge is a burden. The Buddha is reputed to have said that knowledge, according to the Buddha, including all this, that is, the conversion of sensation into image and name and making all that into the content of consciousness. This is the whole meaning of the Buddhist word skandha. 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 And they say this is the burden which man carries from birth to death. They have said things like this. But it has become another form of knowledge, of course. And also, I think because all these things come from such ancient times, we it is not spelled out. It, if you said to somebody today, someone who has never heard you, knowledge is the enemy of love, it won't mean a thing to him. So something comes from a scripture, from a book, which makes a statement like that. I can tell you statement, for instance, which says, knowledge is limiting, it is bondage. Jnanam bandha. Jnanam bandha. says that. What does it mean? It doesn't mean anything to anybody. Aren't you surprised? This sounds not personal, not personal. I've never been personal, I'm not. Aren't you surprised how this chair, where is it read any of this, comes from? Not personally, I am not surprised because. Mm. Hmm? Yes, go ahead, I'd like to hear. Because I think that possibility is there and that possibility has flowered in this case. If that possibility were not there, we who are sitting when we are listening to this, discussing this, we would have no idea of what these words mean. The very fact that we have some awareness of the truth of this shows that possibility is there. I don't want to go more into that. I think there is something mystical about it. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this, sir, that sitting and l listening to you and reading the very similar sounding things in a book is an absolutely, totally different dimension of experience. I am going back to this, sir. <clears throat> I don't want to use words which will make you react, but people have all the time spoken about avatars. What does avatar mean? It <laughs> means descent. Descent. Manifestation. Manifestation. So, is it, perhaps it is true that from time to time, intelligence itself manifests. manifests. Not a god, but if intelligence is 
and if it intelligence has as you said just now untold um, capacity. capacity yes surely it can it can and perhaps does manifest Now we are entering to some goal. No. When you said, aren't you surprised that... No, I am just... I am just speculating. No, what I want to really ask is, if it happens with one person, I am sure it can happen with everyone. Yes. That is is why I also said the possibility is there. No, I wouldn't choose possible. Mm -hmm. The possible becomes the impossible. The impossible becomes the possible. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Once you said, I'm not just quoting this as, you know, just to quote, but intelligence or goodness is waiting. Is it? Waiting, 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 no, waiting. waiting. Let's move on to this. Because I get nervous. So only one, only one last. <laughs> if you say avatara, descent, has there ever been a situation where there has been a movement away from knowledge? You understand? It seems always as if it is from there to here. Never from here a movement away. But it's a rest stop. Yes. Enough of a good thing.